Hello YouTube world, pretend farmer here. Not a real farmer, just pretending. Follow me to the coop, I wanna show you something. So we have infiltrated the chicken's lair. Now as you can see over there in the corner nest box, I have my broody hen. Now for those of you that follow my channel, this is the same hen that went broody back earlier in the spring. And she's raised up those chicks spent several weeks taking a little break and she has decided to go broody again here going into July soon. So she's very committed to being a mommy chicken. And you know, normally a chicken that goes broody back to back and it's just always broody, a lot of times their health can suffer from it. But in this case, she had time to replenish all of her nutrients. She's perfectly healthy. We're gonna go ahead and let her follow through with setting on these eggs. She's setting on 16 eggs. And so we're going for a really super duper hatch this time. This brings up an important question though for discussion. Today we're gonna to talk about inbreeding and chickens. You know, I'll never forget the first time I had a broody hen. My hen sat on her eggs. I had already gotten a rooster at that time and I knew they were fertile eggs. So I watched those eggs hatch I watched those baby chicks mature into pullets and then into young laying hens. And at that point, the pretend farmer was shocked to see that the rooster, which was their daddy, was starting to notice them. And let's just say that rooster was trying to mate with them, just like he did with their mommy chicken. It raised some questions in my head. How is it that you get by with this and don't have problems? Inbreeding is highly frowned upon amongst humans because we know from history it's been practiced and there's been a lot of messed up people have a lot of problems from that as a result of it. Uh, you know, the gene pool's just too narrow. There's issues there. So pretend farmer got to thinking, well, how come your chickens then, when you do this, don't turn out as messed up chickens? In this video, we're going to talk about, is it okay to inbreed your chickens? The answer to that question is yes. Just about all the chickens we have today come from inbreeding. And when you're talking about poultry or livestock, typically the term line breeding is used instead. You know, they've used line breeding to create the Buff Orpington chicken, for example. There's absolutely nothing wrong with it whenever it's practiced responsibly, but there can be problems if it's not, we're going to talk about it in this video because I know a lot of you, you've got a homestead. Chickens are kind of your entry level homestead animal. And a lot of you with your homesteads that you're trying to start up, you get chickens and you've got the uh, mindset that you want to be 100% self-sustaining or at least as self-sustainable as possible. And so you get chickens, you get some hens and a rooster and you think, okay, well, I'll just hatch out my offspring and I'll just keep hatching out new generations of chickens to build up my flock, and that way I don't have to go to the store and buy new chickens again. The truth is you can get by with this for a little bit, but I think just about everything I've studied up on agrees that at some point you need to throw some fresh meat in there, some new bloodlines to mix things up a little bit, or else you're going to get into some genetic problems with your chickens. Chickens that are inbred will often show physical defects. Their overall health will be very poor. You might have chickens that just suddenly drop dead or they seem to be getting sick all the time. Fertility will be affected. You might have really poor hatch rates if you're trying to hatch eggs. The eggs that your chickens lay might be smaller than what they should be for that breed. If you were to see any of these symptoms start to appear within your flock, that might be a sign that you need to go ahead and refresh your gene pool with some fresh blood. Get some different birds that you know are of a different bloodline and mix it up a little bit. If you're gonna start breeding chickens, you wanna make sure that you're starting out with the highest quality birds you can get a hold of. If you start out with junk, you're not gonna produce quality hatchlings from chickens that are bad off to start with. You know, if the mommy and the daddy they're just kind of sickly looking chickens. Breeding those would be a bad idea. If you got a rooster that's a really mean rooster, breeding that rooster 
is more than likely going to produce more young little mean cockerels. They're going to grow up to be mean just like their daddy rooster. You got a nice rooster on the other hand, that's the kind of genes you want passed down so that you can have a rooster with a good temperament that you don't have to worry about around your children. Or maybe you do want a rooster that's a little more aggressive. Well, find you one that mimics the traits you want and breed that. Just make sure you're breeding healthy birds, like Miss Molly here. Miss Molly's more like a lap dog than a chicken. Her eggs are the ones that I want to try and isolate to really make sure that they're getting hatched so that ideally I can produce more buff Warpington chickens that are very relaxed and enjoy cuddling because that's what we enjoy here on the pretend farm. Now, if you're going to hatch chicks and sell them for money, it's really not a problem. You can do as many hatches as your rooster can put out. In that case, you have the same rooster breeding the same hens all the time, but you're not passing that down and down and down and down. You're getting rid of them each time. That's a perfectly safe thing to do as far as breeding and hatching chickens. The problem is if you want to build your own flock and be halfway self-sustaining, you're going to hatch chicks and statistically speaking, about half of them are probably going to be cockerels or roosters and the other half are going to be hens. And so you're going to run into two dilemmas here. Dilemma number one is as they mature and get older, your daddy chicken that basically fertilized their eggs and created them, he's going to want to start mating with his offspring now. Chickens will do that. And then you've got the brother-sister issue. Those young cockerels that grew up alongside of those hens, even though they're brothers and sisters, even though they're related, they're still going to try and mate with each other. Generally, it's the mating between the offspring that you really want to try and put a stop to. You know, the brother and the sister chickens, you don't want them doing a whole lot of reproducing just because any kind of genetic defects that got passed down from the daddy chicken into those can get almost like double copied. And then you get a double whammy of that into the next breed. And as you keep going down, their health declines and you start running into more and more problems. So most people agree you're safe to line breed a couple generations worth of chickens. And they recommend using the original daddy rooster to mate with the offspring. You can crank out one or two batches of chicks and build back up your flock and you can be perfectly fine like that. The thing is at some point, and nobody can agree exactly when, but at some point, especially if you start noticing any of those signs or symptoms that I mentioned earlier, you need to throw some fresh blood in there. Find another rooster. You can get different hens. Um, you can have two different roosters. Here on the pretend farm, we currently have three roosters. So the genetic diversity in our flock is going to be so mix matched, we can get by with a long time of breeding our chickens before we ever would run into any kind of inbreeding or line breeding issues. All of our chickens come from a different place pretty much. And so we're kind of in a good position to start out with here on the pretend farm. But let's say you have one rooster and about eight or nine hens. One of your hens goes broody, she sets on a clutch of eggs, you hatch those up, try and keep the offspring from mating with each other. Any cockerels that you hatch, either cull them or find them a new home. That way the only thing you gotta keep up with is your main rooster and who he's mating with. And while you can't control who he's mating with because he's gonna mate with all the hens, you pretty much know the next time you hatch chicks, you know there's probably a good chance that some of those eggs are going to be the offspring fertilized by their daddy rooster and then the next year if they go broody at that point you really 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 want to start watching closely for any kind of defects because you're getting to the point there where at that point there maybe could be some problems here's the thing though it takes a hen about six months to get to the point of sexual maturity where the rooster is going to really start trying to mate with them and when you look at the lifespan of most roosters, as that rooster gets older, he's gonna kinda simmer down a little bit. He's not gonna be so much interested in breeding anymore. Generally, by the time you hatch enough batches of chicks to get to the point where you would have to worry about line breeding issues, it's not gonna be a problem because your rooster's gonna be done anyway. Just understand, you're better off at that point to go get a new rooster 
get one from a, a hatchery or someplace totally different where you're getting a different bloodline. While line breeding can end up ultimately producing unique breeds of chickens and chickens that are very desirable, tailored to what you want, you can also pass down the bad stuff too, like vulnerability to sickness. We learned from COVID that viruses, diseases, they're constantly changing. You got the different strands, different variants. Well, as those things change, if you're breeding the same chickens over and over, just passing down the same genes, those genes are not changing. They're, they're just being copied and handed down to the next generation. So what you're gonna end up with is chickens that are more vulnerable to sickness. So I hate to tell all you homesteaders out there, but if you're planning on buying one original batch of chickens and just hatching chicks generation after generation after generation so that you can be 100% self-sufficient and never have to buy any chickens from the store again because you hatch your own. It's probably just going to cause you problems in the long run. But it's really not a problem. You can get on Craigslist and find somebody with a cockerel or a rooster that they want to part with. You can order one from a hatchery. If you want to pay a little more money, you can find a breeder that's known for having roosters with really good traits that you like mix him in. The key is just mix it up from time to time so that you don't end up with issues from line breeding your chickens. You know the best rule of thumb to follow is if you notice any kind of traits with your offspring, whether it be sickness or any kind of deformalities, chickens just don't look healthy anymore, anything like that, you need to switch up your breeding program. It can be really hard to determine whether you've actually got inbreeding issues with your chickens or not, but obviously if you're having chickens hatch and they're not growing up to be healthy chickens, you know you need to stop the program regardless of the issues, whether it's inbreeding or what, you don't wanna keep breeding those same chickens. So just keep an eye on that. Keep an eye for egg size, for you know sickness within your flock. Make sure your birds look happy and healthy. And as long as they're doing those things, you feel free to use the same rooster that rooster can mate with his offspring. If possible, try and keep the offspring from mating with each other. And I think as long as you follow those simple rules, you can breed several generations worth of chicks and you'll know when it's gonna be time to get a new rooster. And by then, guess what? Your rooster's gonna be old and worn out anyway. Get a new one, get different bloodlines. Don't just hatch a young cockerel and raise him up and say, well, there's my new rooster because he's got the same bloodlines you need to freshen it up. And I hope if anything, this video has kind of helped you to see that you know you can have healthier chickens if you're doing that and mixing things up. There's really no such thing as self-sustaining when it comes to that, but you can always find people that are willing to go to poultry swaps, swap them, get them from other places. You can also get fertilized eggs if you don't want to actually buy more chickens. Just put them under a broody hen. There you go, you just mixed up your gene pool some. Even if you have a closed flock, from time to time, after a couple generations, it's important that you mix in some new bloodlines and keep things mixed up in your flock to ultimately have the healthiest birds. Till next time, this is the Pretend Farmer, signing out.